We talk about growth, company growth, but then there's scale up of regions or clusters or industries as a whole, which is different than sort of the, the tactics that you may have for growth within a, within a firm. And I think when we're looking at that, one of the challenges that we have is that there isn't that norm. And this is something that I had, had brought up and I've seen a lot in what I'm doing is that you, if different regions, it becomes normal for people to grow. It comes, becomes normal for them to have that expectation of, hey, we can do this, we can get larger. And if that piece isn't in place, there aren't the models around and people are, become complacent. They're, they're, I always say they're, they buy the car that they wanna buy, they maybe have their summer cottage, and so they don't see that desire or that need to kind of grow to the next level as an individual entrepreneur. There is a much higher number of Canadian inventors, Canadian by nationality who live in the U.S. than um, uh, innovators that are coming from abroad have nationality of any other country by, but Canada and reside in Canada. And there is a very wide gap that over the years has only become wider. So Canadian inventors do uh, either prefer moving to U.S. and uh, working for U.S. companies, so it's uh, foreign companies that are still in our inventors, or it could be because this, um, uh, the data is derived from patent applications, it could be that Canada is losing the most productive inventors to foreign markets. But it's interesting that it's not only for, the problem is not only for Canada. If you think about the US, the country that is uh, the biggest patent holder in the world, a lot of um, uh, R&D intensive firms prefer to now shift their R&D operations into countries like China, India, despite, uh, for example, patent protection being quite weak in these countries. And the reason they do it is to tap into highly educated, highly skilled local labor force at a relatively low cost. And I think for Canada, this is one of the key barriers to scaling up or to innovation is the lack of talent in, in Canada, is, is the lack of uh, skills, um, which um, makes matching task to skill very hard. And of course, if you go uh, scale up globally, then you have a wider pool of uh, workers to choose from and um, improve that match. It's very funny um, the way we in Canada now talk about ourselves. Depending on the audience, we're either huge or small, but it always is a disadvantage. <laughs> One curse is that we had it too easy. And if you look at our history, economic history, uh, we in New Zealand are the only two countries that became rich without really ever having to industrialize in the real sense, economic sense of the world. Uh, it's very easy for us to be okay as long as the U.S. market is there. And as a matter of fact, in industries where I would hope we innovate, so um, oil, for example, and if you just look at the until very recently, without going into who was a political leader at the time, um, you look at things for uh, uh, and what do we do with the oil once we got it out of the ground. We actually became less and less sophisticated in the last 15 years or until something happened, including prices, instead of more. So what we are not doing very well is acting strategically. So we have few hubs. Um, Toronto, Montreal, Vancouver, where you can really think about a startup based hub around very specific industries. We have a financial system which is highly sophisticated and very trusted. Uh, we also have natural resources. Uh, and we are big enough to actually have a lot of experimentation. And we are uniquely built to have those experimentation because we are actually more federal than the US. So our provinces are much more powerful, and our federal government is much weaker. But what we don't try to do is to experiment enough. And if you want to know why I care about scale-up, is if you have a successful experiment, how you grow it. Instead of saying, great, I have $50 million, I can retire. Um, when I am uh, thinking about what government can do and this um, sort of uh, the problem of uh, many regions in Canada being uh, too rural or too isolated, 
uh, I think one way of uh, sort of lessening the gap um, in, um, uh, between rural and urban prosperity and stimulate activity in um, rural isolated areas is to invest in infrastructure in rural areas. And it could be basic infrastructure, uh, such as broadband technology. I've done uh, a study a couple of years ago on the impact of uh, broadband deployment across Canada uh, on the employment and wages. And uh, the comparison was interesting between the rural and urban areas. And the results are striking. Deploy Deployment of broadband that Canada has done since 1997 has spurred economic activity in rural areas, has increased wages, uh, wage growth in rural areas, as well as increased uh, wage growth in urban areas. So this is one of the examples where investment has worked. And um, it, it's largely due to the role of government, because uh, privately broadband would have, not, uh, would have not been deployed in these areas. There is not, not, not large enough market, but uh, government and funding did have an impact.